So this is the cover of uh, the book, uh, Non-Emission Quantum Mechanics. And I want to say a few words about the cover. Um, I have a friend who is a professor in Harvard that told me that, uh, uh, that when his uh, son saw the cover of this book and he was three years old, he was very excited and therefore he made a poster uh, to him in his room. Uh, I don't believe this professor read this, my book, but his son, maybe, when he grew up, he would like to know what is stand behind this poster. So the cover is nice. And I want to speak a little bit uh, about this cover, uh, which not related to non-emission first, but about quantum mechanics in general. So I, I'm sure that you know what I'm going to tell you, but I decided to say it anyhow. Um, you see that I make here pictures of, uh, uh, of dice. So somebody knows why dice? Because uh, so it's Einstein said? Yes. It doesn't play with dice, about the yes. Okay. So yes, you are right. Uh, sorry. <coughs> Quantum mechanics, no, it's, it's a non-deterministic de, de, laws in nature. So in quantum mechanics, the laws in nature are not deterministic. And therefore, it's like playing with dice. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit about it, but uh, it's a famous phrase of Einstein when there was a meeting about uh, quantum mechanics. Although the quantum mechanics, as you all know, started or based on one of the experiments that uh, have done based on the uh, Einstein uh, uh, theory about the uh, uh, photoelectric effect. Uh, Einstein didn't like this uh, theory and he said that God doesn't play dice in dice. And the, the, uh, Niels Bohr, that was one of the founders of quantum mechanics, answered him in a very simple way. Do you know what is the answer of Pardon? Yes, don't tell what God what to do. Yeah, I like it. Now, uh, what is the means that there are no deterministic laws in nature? So maybe it's easier to speak about classical mechanics where laws in nature are deterministic. So uh, based on qu classical mechanics, so Newtonian uh, uh, mechanics, um, if we do experiment over and over, exactly the same experiment. And if we have good detectors, what is good detectors? Good detectors are detectors with zero errors, zero. No, uh, the interaction of the detector with the system is small as small as you wish. And when you do these experiments over and over and with the same initial conditions, then we'll get the same result. Exactly the same results because Newton laws are deterministic. If you calculate classical trajectory in phase space, phase space is mom momentum space and, uh, and spatial space, you'll get always the same trajectory regardless what calculation you are doing. For example, this, in this case is not experiment, assuming that you have infinite large computer. Why infinite large computer? Because you need a computer with no round of error. If you do calculation, there are no round of errors. Let's assume that there is such a machine. And you can describe even exactly to all the uh, digits uh, irrational numbers. So if you do this, you always will get the same result. What about uh, chaotic dynamics? That you know, it's uh, when you have chaos. When you have chaos, you know, we know also about the butterfly effect. The butterfly effect implies that you will not get the same trajectory in phase space if you start with a, a little different initial conditions. Or when the, you start with the same initial conditions, but the system is changed because the butterfly going above you, the building, and make a weak interaction with your uh, setup, with your experimental uh, device. And then, so you speak about situations when the uh, results are extremely sensitive to extremely small external perturbations. But if you don't have these external perturbations, they will get exactly the same result. So this is deterministic laws in nature. Well, in quantum mechanics, the situation is different. In quantum mechanics, if we repeat on the same experiment over and over with having good detectors, as we said before, 
you will not get the same result in each one of the experiments. Not always. Sometimes you will get exactly the same result. But these are very special cases. For those that all of you in this course learn quantum mechanics, if you measure a, a quantity that when, this, and the, when the system is uh, prepared to be in eigenstate of the uh, operator that you are going to measure. If you want to measure the energy, if you started with eigenstate of the Hamiltonian, you will get all in each one of the experiments exactly the same result. But if you do something else, you want to measure fluctuations, you want to measure another quantity, you do a series of experiments, you first measure a quantity A and then you measure the quantity B, etc. Then uh, uh, you will get fluctuations in the result. Namely, when you repeat on the same experiment, exactly the same conditions, exactly the same situation, everything precisely the same, you will get different results. This is contradict what not only a, a non scientist people want to believe, but also scientists. When you do the experiments and you repeat on the same experiments many times, what are you looking for? For the situations when you are going to get the same results. And here I'm saying no, you will never be able to get the same results. There are fluctuations. And you know it from the experimentalists. And then I'm telling that quantum mechanics claim, claims that the fluctuation in the results are not because of your measurement. It can be because of your measurement. But if you have got uh, uh, machines, uh, detectors, everything is precisely the same, still you will have fluctuations. This is quantum mechanics. And this is why quantum mechanics insists that there are no really deterministic laws in nature. And this is what Einstein didn't like. He was not a religious Jew, but he was a Jew. And I'm saying it because a part of the Judaism is actually somehow the belief in deterministic laws in nature. The, the religious people call it God. The, the others see it as God, nature. There is some deterministic laws in nature. So this comes to be philosophy. Quantum mechanics is not philosophy. And um, so this is the... So. Now, how me quantum mechanics is different from classical mechanics? Um, in quantum mechanics, as you all know very well, we describe uh, not the uh, trajectory of a particle in phase space, but we have matter waves. Now, matter waves is something that is, uh, exists in quantum mechanics only in our imagination. They are not real. And <coughs> the, the beauty of it is that if you know what is the matter waves, which are the solutions of the time-dependent Schroeder equation, then using this uh, matter wave, wave function or wave packet, it's possible to calculate any measurable quantities, even to see all the fluctuations that I told you about. And the average over all the results that you are going to obtain in these fluctuations is something that quantum mechanics know to predict. You know, this is related to the expectation values of the operator that you uh, measure, that describe the dynamical property that you measure. So quantum mechanics, based on something that is a purely imaginary one, imagination, it's a, it's, 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 it's a, a matter waves. But the matter waves enable to, uh, to predict and what is going to be obtained in the experiment that helps to, to uh, um, to uh, uh, design experiments. If you take even uh, something simple, basically, if you take the, the solution of the uh, eigenfunction of the Hamiltonian for hydrogen atom, and you get uh, the solutions, in this case, when it's only one electrons, we call it orbitals, it implies that it, the matter waves, which describe the electron in hydrogen atom, in each uh, wave function, give you the probability to find the electron at given energy in everywhere in space. So the electron in our body now is not only here, in principle can be also in China or out of space. So what I'm trying to say is that it's not deter uh, deterministic, you know, the, uh, each wave function gives you density probability. The density probability implies that the electron can be everywhere in some po highest probability in one places and lowest probability in other places, but it's at the same time, at the same time, everywhere. So this is uh, quantum mechanics. 
And I want to emphasize here that, uh, that uh, the, well, I will learn in time, that, uh, that for example, for atoms and molecules and mesoscopic systems, here I'm speaking about the situation that we don't take the, into consideration the interaction with external radiation field, just to solve the, the Schroeder equation for this. Uh, we, um, uh, the only input that we have, remember, is the masses and the charges of the interacting particles, is the electrons and the nuclei, uh, nuclei, and also the Hamiltonian. Now, what is the Hamiltonian? I didn't want to write the classical Hamiltonian, but actually, you take the classical Hamiltonian, and this is the information that you need, and you need to get from the classical Hamiltonian the quantum Hamiltonian, and just to summarize what you may know already, that you need to write the classical Hamiltonian and better to write it in what coordinates somebody can guess or remember. In any coordinates you can write the classical Hamiltonians before we're doing two quantum Hamiltonian? Frequency Pardon? In frequency. No. Cartesian coordinates. Frequency coordinates you speak, uh, uh, I don't know exactly what you, you mean, but you need to write the Hamiltonian in uh, Cartesian coordinates, x, y, and z. Each one, if you have many particles, each one of them is x, y, and z. And the reason is that then, to, do, to move from the classical um, kinetic energy to the quantum one, that you know that it's uh, uh, partial derivatives with respect to the coordinates, better do it in Cartesian coordinates. Why well, I say better, but if you do it uh, in uh, the classical Hamiltonian, you are writing it in other set of coordinates, cylindrical coordinates, polar coordinates, whatever, then the, the quantum quantization is complicated, extremely complicated. So uh, there is a way to go to, 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 to the quantum Hamiltonian, but the, as a rule of thumb, always write the classic Hamiltonian in Cartesian coordinates, then go to the quantum mechanics by changing the momentum, uh, the classical momentum to the, cla the momentum operators. H bar divided by I, delete the X. Yes, this is, for example, the uh, projection of the momentum along the X direction. Well, in the end, if you want, we can discuss it a little bit. But this is uh, what I want to, uh, to say. Uh, well, maybe I will say something here about this equation. In the moment, I will tell you something. But if you ignore the theta and think about it like in standard quantum mechanics emission, this is the time-independent Schroeder equation, of course. And uh, the time-independent Schroeder equation uh, give us the solutions of the time-dependent uh, uh, solution of the Schroeder equation, but the stationary one. So if you take this, uh, uh, in standard Hermitian quantum mechanics, this psi, and you take the absolute value square of it, it gives you the density probability to find the particles in every point in space. And it's time independent. So these are the stationary solutions. So the probability to find the particles in space are time independent, and the solution of the, for the density probability obtained by solving this equation.